Hey guys, welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. I am your host Lucas and today we're going to be doing a bit of a review of the Radiolink AT9. Uh, this is the radio that I've been flying since I started doing FPV a few months back and uh, it's been a very solid radio for me. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. But uh, originally what I really wanted to do is I wanted to do a video about modding the antenna receiver, on, uh, the antenna transmitter on the AT9 so that I could use an external RPSMA pigtail that would come out of the top of my radio that would allow me to run a higher gain antenna like this crazy 8 dBi 2.4 GHz antenna that I got or use it in a ground station because uh, as winter is approaching here in Canada and the weather is getting nastier I want to be able to fly from inside my car so I got this TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi range extender thing and it's basically just a magnetic base with an 8 dBi antenna and an RPSMA cable so I'll be able to run this on the roof of my car and connect the cable to my radio and I should be able to fly inside and be away from the cold. However, when it came time to actually do the mod, I screwed up. Uh, here's the RF module from the radio that I screwed up and uh, you won't, probably won't be able to see it there but uh, when I was soldering the antenna onto it, I messed up and uh, touched a couple of the SMDs and they got desoldered. I lost them, I found them, I tried to put them back on and then I lost them again and now they're gone. So I cannot make this work anymore. It is entirely foobard. I'm not even going to try. So sadly, I killed the radio. Too bad. Luckily, there was a good deal on them online recently, and there already was one on the way. So the, re the replacement arrived, and I was surprised to notice that actually uh, Radio Link has taken... Uh, and taking some time to do a few very, very small improvements to the radio that were actually quite welcome. So before I go into those improvements, I wanted to talk about some of the features of the radio. So this is just a 2.4 gigahertz DSSS protocol radio. Uh, it's essentially a Futaba clone and uh, has many of the same features as the Futaba. It is a, a very cheap press point. I think it's about $120 US which is way cheaper than, than the Tyrannus and has a lot of features for that price. Uh, it does have telemetry for RX voltage and RSSI as well as other um, sensors that you can put on the craft depending on what kind of receiver you're going to be using. And uh, they work quite well. There's no like voice callouts or anything like that for your RSSI or any other alarms that you decide to set. All that the radio does is vibrate in your hands, which I actually prefer. I find that the Tyrannus yelling at you about voltage and RSSI to be quite annoying. So that subtle little vibration on your hands is just enough that for me to know that I need to do something or maybe I need to pay attention to what's going on. Uh, so that's a nice feature in my eyes. Uh, the the, the receivers themselves are all S Plus compatible and the ones that come with the radio are kind of big for the mini quad world. They're like these full size receivers, but you can actually de-pin them, take the, these pins all off and just leave the S Plus ones and you can basically convert them into something like this, like a nice small little package with a single dipole antenna. So these receivers are all dipole antennas. They do not have diversity, which is another drawback uh, compared to the Tyrannus. However, I've found that these uh, dipole antennas work quite well and I get excellent reception where I fly. The only time I've ever had a fail safe was flying near an apartment building and I think it was just the RF background noise that it was being emitted by the building that knocked out my radio. It was momentary only and I was able to catch it and still save the craft, no problem. So I'm not sure if having two antennas on your quad really makes that much of a difference. The only thing is that when you mount the antennas on your quads, you kind of have to mount them a bit like this, almost like an RC car, so they kind of have to come out of the top. Uh, I have one quad where I mounted it in sort of a weird back angle and it seems to work pretty well. So this is my space one, which I've, uh, I use for flying at night because it has a night camera on it. And uh, here's the antenna for it right here. So it's just coming out of the back and uh, it seems to work fine. I haven't had any issues with this configuration either. So solid receiver on the Radiolink AT9. Uh, it's a fairly unknown radio, but uh, it is the radio that you get when you buy RTF stuff from Helipal. And uh, that's how I got mine. I bought my first drone was an SRD200 from Helipal. It came with the AT9 and uh, it's worked really, really well for me since. Uh, I found that the receivers were a good price point and they work really, really well, uh, especially with the S Plus. So I've stuck with them so far. Uh, the other receiver that Radiolink also supplies now that just came out is the R6 DSM which is this tiny little guy right here. So it's uh, smaller than my thumb pretty much. It just has an S bus out, nothing else. And uh, it was designed for, for like the micro quad world and it's super, super tiny. 
I want to run some tests on this and see if we could actually run it out of a bigger quad as well, but I'm afraid that a single pole uh, antenna without any diversity might not do so well as a dipole. So this is going to be going on my Doinker when I get it, so you guys can look forward to a Doinker build video sometime very, very soon. Uh, it's kind of coming on uh, Donkey Express, so it might be here in a few more weeks. So uh, also I will be doing a video on how to depend these uh, receivers to make them into these cool little um, lighter receivers and easier to install receivers for your quads if you do run 89 stuff. So back to the radio. Um, so we already discussed some of the features in terms of the, of the, of the radio. Uh, I want to talk about now is what they have changed. So externally not much at all has changed on the radios. But uh, one nice little feature that they did add on the new one, and the new one is the one here on the right, is uh, these little lines right here and here to mark the center of your gimbal, which is really, really helpful when you're actually calibrating, especially the throttle since it doesn't have a spring to return it into the center. So uh, this is a mode two radio. You can very easily convert it to a mode one. They give you all the spare parts and they even give you some spare springs in case uh, one of your gimbals all of a sudden snaps. Uh, the gimbals, as I said, feel nice and smooth and have 4,096 steps, so it seems to be more than enough for me. Uh, internally, however, there are a few more differences. Uh, they seem to be mostly cosmetic in some cases, and in other cases, they're actually improvements. So let's just open up the radios here really quickly. As you can see, it's pretty easy to open up. Uh, and I'm just going to change the camera angle here so you guys can see a little bit better what is going on. So obviously the first thing you're going to notice is that the PCBs are different colors, including on the back here. This is your trainer port and as well as a SIM port. You can use this to run SIM uh, simulator games on. So you'll notice that the boards are different colors, but other than that, it really seems like everything is pretty much the same. Uh, for whatever reason, they mounted uh, the, retainer, uh, the retainer for the throttle stick inverted on the two builds, but it doesn't seem to matter at all. Uh, now the biggest difference and the thing that I was like, wow, awesome guys, finally, is uh, they added that micro UFL to the, our, to, the, to the transmitter module. So this is the old transmitter module. And they're very, very similar, except for this one here has the very familiar VTX style, like center positive and then ground all around. And uh, you have to like shear the, the coaxial cable properly and make sure you don't short anything. But uh, in the case of a micro UFL like that one, man, it's easy. You just pop that out and pop that in. So I have a micro UFL to RPSMA cable coming in the mail. And when that arrives, I will do a quick little video on where I show you guys how I'm going to be installing the RPSMA up here and how I'll be running the cable to get the micro UFL in there. And uh, that will allow me to run that external antenna I showed you earlier or a higher gain antenna on my radio and, and really improve the range. They say that the range right now on air is about a kilometer. I haven't really flown that far. I would say maybe I've flown 500, 600 meters at most. And that was with perfectly stable radio connection the entire time. No RSSI alarms or anything like that. Um, as I said, for the price point, this radio is amazing. Really, really, really good quality. It feels really solid in your hand. And... Um, it's like half, less than half the price of the Tyrannus. So I'm not trying to convince you that this is better than the Tyrannus or anything like that. Believe me, the Tyrannus has better features for sure. And there's actually a Tyrannus refresh coming out pretty soon that I'm actually quite interested in. But uh, if you're looking for something budget or just a spare radio to have or something like that, really do consider the radio link. Uh, the price point is quite excellent and you get a really decent unit for the price. Uh, I'm also a pincher, so when I fly, I find that this works really well for me. It uh, allows me to still control these switches if I really had to. Uh, I can still use my arm and disarm switches and uh, over here as well, so very easily. Um, so I really like the way this feels in my hand. I find that the Tyrannus to be a little bit bulkier than this, and I didn't like how I felt as much. So uh, you guys can look forward to a couple more videos. Uh, as soon as I get my micro UFL, I'll be taking care of that. and. Uh, I'll have a Doinker build for you guys coming soon and how to deepen your receivers on the ET9 to make them smaller. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, come back and check us out, and uh, I'll see you guys next time on the Loose Transistor channel. Take care.